Hi there, I'm Serge Hunt, founder of Cities of School. AI is humanizing education. All the things that were on the periphery or felt like add-ons or things you had to squeeze into your normal educational practice are now becoming front and center. From social emotional learning, careers, coaching, mentorship, and just being a good friend are all coming into the center of the classroom as AI frees up more time for us to focus on what's truly important. In this video, we'll walk through some AI literacy fundamentals. We'll cover what is AI, what is ChatGPT, what is a prompt, and how ChatGPT is different to a Google search. Let's get into it. Firstly, what is AI? AI is an umbrella term encompassing various sub-disciplines and applications. The most important concept to understand underpinning all AI technology is the idea of training. Training is the process of showing a computer a vast amount of data, whether that be images, videos, audio, or text, so that it can output predictions or generate new audio, video, images, or text. The differences in the type of AI depend on the initial training data and what the final output is. You'll often hear terms like text-to-text, -text, or text-to-speech, or images-to-video. Let's say you overhear someone talking about a text-to-speech AI model. This just means that this AI model was trained on text and outputs speech-like audio. Let's look through some common applications of AI and look at what they're trained on. Computer vision was popularized by self-driving cars. Teslas and other autonomous vehicles use computer vision to navigate roads safely. These AI models are trained on a bunch of images and video to be able to identify objects so that the car can alter its speed and direction. Another commonly discussed application of AI is AGI. This stands for Artificial General Intelligence. This refers to machines that have intelligence that's comparable to human learning, reasoning, and applying knowledge in different and diverse contexts. At present, AGI is still theoretical and is still the stuff of science fiction and movies. Our next example is video games. All the non-playable characters and the avatars and enemies that you see running around video games are trained on large amounts of player data and adapt their behavior accordingly to exhibit human-like decisions and strategy. Our last example is large language models, or LLMs. These are trained on vast amounts of text data, often from the internet, and output coherent and contextually relevant text based on your inputs. For this video, we'll be focusing on large language models, specifically the large language model ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a large language model developed by OpenAI. GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Remember how I told you that most AI works by looking at a vast amount of existing data and learning by identifying patterns across all of them? That's what the pre-trained part means. ChatGPT is trained on all the publicly available text available on the internet before September 2021, so it's seen a lot of text from antiquity all the way to the latest scientific research papers. Generative and Transformer refer to its ability to generate new text based on your input. ChatGPT can be used for various purposes such as assisting in research, answering questions, providing suggestions, generating new content, and even engaging in casual conversations. But we want to do specific things in our role as educators. How do we do that? You'll need to learn how to write a prompt. A prompt is your input to an AI model. Unlike Googling something, you have to phrase your input in a specific way to get a high quality output. We'll cover how to write good prompts later in this workshop. To tell ChatGPT what to generate for you, you use plain English. Depending on the quality and structure of your prompt, you'll get better or worse results. For example, if I just give it the prompt, maths class, you'll get this output. But if I'm more specific and write the prompt, write a heart of algebra SAT lesson plan for the module solving linear equations and systems of linear equations. Or if I just type biology experts, I'll get this poor output. But if I'm more specific, and say, create a table of leading experts in cellular biology with their name, affiliated organization, and LinkedIn profile, ChatGPT can generate a list of all of these experts and tabulate the data for me. The core difference between a search engine like Google and ChatGPT is that search engines are matchmaking related web pages by keywords. 
If you type best places to eat in New York, it will take the words and look for exactly those words on other web pages and bring them to you. ChatGPT, on the other hand, uses a technique called vector representation, not keywords. You use some smart maths to understand how similar or dissimilar words are from each other that you input. It then takes that input and generates text based on what it has learned during its training. It's important to note that because ChatGPT uses vectors to try and guess the similarity of words and then predict the next word, this isn't understanding or knowing, sentience or consciousness. Don't let the often overhyped news and content out there confuse you. It's simply trying to predict the next word in the writing based on your input. I hope that video gave you a basic understanding of the core terms in AI and specifically large language models like ChatGPT. We covered how they work, why they're different to Google searches, and what a prompt is. And I hope the rest of this workshop allows you to engage with it in your context and design prompts that help you save time, save you some stress, and also allow you to personalize learning around your students. 